So it is my very great honor to welcome you to the 2018 San Francisco State University Convocation. Yay, we're all very excited about it. So as you can see from the agenda, the event is jointly sponsored by the San Francisco State Academic Senate and the Office of the President. And I would like to acknowledge that without the uh, support of the President and the hard work of Allison Sanders, the President's Chief of Staff, we could not have broadened the scope of this event. So I'm very grateful uh, to both of them for that support. I'm personally very excited to play a part in opening up this celebration to the start of the new academic year and opening it up to all employees at uh, the university. I think this is a recognition of the role that faculty, staff, administrators, and student government plays in the success of our students and our university. So I hope you enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed the reception and walked away meeting some new people and gaining a better understanding of the activities and resources on campus. And if you weren't able to snag a bag, then I'd say next year, you know, come a little earlier and hopefully we'll be able to do that again next year. Now, one disadvantage of broadening the scope of the event is we're going to have to run a somewhat tight ship to stay on time. Uh, so I've warned our speakers that if they stray too much over their allotted time, they should expect me to come up to the podium and thank them for their remarks. And I apologize in advance for needing to do this. I did leave the bell behind. I'd originally thought I would use a bell, but I'm going to leave that alone. All right, so one of the themes that you're going to see throughout today is the introduction of new faculty, staff, and administrators on our campus. So I'm going to start us off with an, some introductions of my own. So first off, I'd like to introduce you to our new Senate office manager, Marina Chavez. Marina, can you step out here for just a second? And if we, if we could give her a little round of applause. Marina has been part of our uh, has been a part-time employee in our office for the last couple of years and I just could not be more excited to have her in the full-time position. So if you see yourself on the fifth floor of the admin building, please stop by and introduce yourself. So the next introductions are of the 2018 Academic Senate Executive Committee. So these are a really dedicated group of faculty and staff who direct the Senate and ensure a culture of shared governance on our campus. And there we go. So we'll start and and Right now, I would ask that for all parts of this program, if you could please hold your applause until we've had everyone introduced, and that would be really helpful. Thank you. All right, so the 2018 officers of the Senate are myself as chair, Vice Chair Tub Teddy Albanak, he's the Director of Forensics and from the Department of Communication Studies, Secretary Kim Schwartz, she's Director of the School of Theater and Dance, and again, our Secretary. And then the next slide. Uh, the standing committee chairs are Academic Policy uh, Committee Chair Jackson Wilson of Recreation, Parks, and Tourism, Curriculum Review and Approval Committee Chair Jeannie Stowers from Public Administration. She could not be with us today. Faculty Affairs Committee Chair Jasper Rubin from Urban Planning and Development, uh, Student Affairs Committee Chair Ellen Hines from Geography and the Environment, and Student uh, Strategic and Issues Committee Chair Tom Thomas, who's the Chair of Management. So on our next slide, we also have on an executive committee the SF State representatives to the statewide Academic Senate, Darlene Yi Mellencar from Gerontology, Rob Collins, who is not only chair of the Department of American Indian Studies, but vice chair of the statewide Academic Senate, so clearly he uh, does not have enough time on his hands. And uh, Dipendra Sinha, he's Professor of Mechanical Engineering and the latest uh, statewide senator. And the last but certainly not least, we have Dylan Mooney, who is IT staff in the College of Health and Social Sciences, and he's one of our at-large members of XCOM. So please join me in thanking them for their service. All right. With that, it is now my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Leslie Wong, the president of San Francisco State University, for his opening remarks. Good morning, everyone, and, and welcome to 2018-19. Uh, before we start, I, I think we should give uh, Dr. Gerber a hand for her organizing part of this, so thank you. Uh, many of the remarks uh, regarding my perception of the year uh, you'll hear at the end uh, with my comments, but I really do expect this to be a banner year for us uh, in many, many different ways. Um, I do want to take this moment, though, to offer the university's condolences to the family of Dr. Don Mabalon, um, who passed away recently. 
Um, her good work, um, not only in the history department, but in the community and the surrounding area, uh, with her community and without her and outside her community, touched so many people. Um, I I really do think she will be missed, uh, and uh, I wanted to express the university's condolences to her uh, and to her family. I believe her services are today in Stockton. Um, it's my honor also to introduce some new senior people. Uh, and let me start with Phyllis Carter, our new Vice President for Admin and Finance and the Chief Financial Officer. <laughs> Welcome, Phyllis. Um, I also want to introduce uh, Stephanie Shreve Hawkins. I believe she's on my left somewhere. Welcome. She is our new athletic director, and um, I want to invite all of you to athletic events uh, to cheer on our student athletes. And last, I would like to introduce our permanent provost and vice president for academic affairs. I've been teasing her all summer about losing her middle name, interim. Uh, but again, she's made a big difference not only across the university but within the uh, strategic efforts of academic affairs and with the colleges. So with all that aside, I get to introduce her as the next part of the program, Dr. Summit. Thank you, President Wong, and thank you to, to everybody. I also, with President Wong, want to thank and really acknowledge Senate Chair Nancy Gerber for spearheading today's convocation and also for the inclusive cross-campus vision that drives it. So cross-campus, now I wonder how we're doing the slides. Some, they are magically happening. Okay, so I'd like the next slide, please. Cross-campus, I've been given five minutes and so I'm gonna talk really fast. Cross-campus collaboration has played, oh, Okay, that is actually not the slide that I want. Imagine a slide of the student success and grad, there we go, and look what happens. So the student success and graduation initiative has really relied on cross-campus collaboration for the nearly two years uh, into its implementation. Our student success plan focuses its efforts on six major areas. Now last year we achieved a number of significant milestones and I'll just cite three. Number one, drawing from the Foundations of Excellence initiative of the preceding year and I know that many of you played, played a role in that. So I'm pleased to, to share the news that the Senate last year formed an FYE task force to begin implementing the significant recommendations that came out of that initiative. The university followed by appointing two directors of the first year experience for academic affairs, Professor Grace Yu and Chris Trudell from the Student Affairs and Enrollment Management and together they really embody the cross-campus collaboration on which this uh, important initiative depends. We've also made major investments in faculty development with the launch of the Center for Equity and Excellence in Teaching and Learning and the appointment of Amy Kilgard as its inaugural faculty director. They've done remarkable work since the uh, winter when they were formally launched. Across the colleges, we've also invested in advising and improving course availability. These are the two areas that students identify as their greatest barriers to, to graduation. Now, as we continue with these efforts, I also want to share the news about a new planning effort that we'll be turning our attention to this year. And this is the Academic Master Plan. Now, the university has never had an Academic Master Plan, and it's time to work together and to craft an affirmative vision and direction for our academic identity and future. This effort began in the Senate last year when the Senate passed a resolution supporting the academic master plan. 
The planning process will be co-led by Nancy Gerber and me. It relies on your active participation and input for its success. So I want to invite you to please come to the kickoff next week. This is going to be held August 29th nine, uh, from 9 to 10 with breakfast at 8.30 in Jack Adams Hall. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce six new leaders in academic affairs, starting with Yim Yu Wong. Ye Dr. Yim Yu Wong the, is the interim dean in the College of Business. She's well known to, in San Francisco State as a faculty member, chair, and associate dean. We'll be searching for the permanent dean in the year ahead. Next is Cynthia Grutzik. Do Dr. Grutzik was hired as the new dean of the Graduate College of Education following an extensive search last year. She comes to us from CSU Long Beach where she served as associate dean in the College of Education. Next is Amy Suyoshi. Dr. Suyoshi was appointed in January as the interim dean in the College of Ethnic Studies where she'd previously served as associate dean and a longtime faculty member. We'll conduct a search for the permanent dean in the year ahead. Next is Alex Wu, who was appointed interim dean of the College of Extended Learning in June. He comes to us from Humboldt State, where he served as associate vice president for the College of Extended Learning and Global Engagement. He's agreed to serve in this role for two years, after which we will search for the permanent dean in 2019-20. Next is Dr. Lori Beth Way, who was hired as Dean of Undergraduate Education and Academic Planning following an internal search last spring. She previously served as Associate Dean in the same division. Finally, Dr. Sophie Clavier was hired as Dean in the Graduate Division following an internal search last spring. She previously served as Associate Dean in Faculty Affairs and before then in the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. Um, we were asked to hold our applause, but I think now we can. I'd like you to join me in welcoming. <laughs> Thank you. Welcoming these important six new leaders. I know their vision and their energy will propel our academic mission in the year ahead. And now, it's my great pleasure to introduce my new colleague on the President's Cabinet, the new Vice President of Administration and Finance, Phyllis Carter. Thank you, Vice President Summit, and good morning to everyone. I would like to express my appreciation to Nancy Gerber and the Academic Senate for granting me this opportunity to share with you the goals and initiatives of administration and finance in this upcoming academic year. First slide, please. I'd like to present our leadership team in administration and finance. We have two new additions to our team this year, in addition to myself. We have Ann Sherman, who's going to be returning to her role as senior AVP of Human Resources. We have Jay Orendorf, who's our AVP of Business Operations. And one of our two new additions is Jeff Wilson. He's our new AVP of Fiscal Affairs. He is joining us from Sonoma State University. Jeff is a CPA. And he is, uh, has previously worked in the public accounting profession as well as the banking industry. Next, we have Nish Malik, who is our AVP of Information Technology and CIO. Frank Fasano is our AVP of Facilities and Service Enterprises. Elena Stone is our Executive Director of Budget Administration and Operations. Jenny Patino is our Executive Director of Housing, Dining, and Conference Services. And Gary Norton is our second new addition to our Administration and Finance team, and he's our Interim Director of Audit and Advisory Services. Gary was appointed to this role in 2017, um, but he was already a member of the team since 2013. Previously, he worked as um, a audit director at Alumni Rock School District and also at the California State Government. Gary is a certified internal auditor. Next, we have Cesar Morphin, who is our associate director of financial management. So if you can join me in welcoming our two new team members.
Next slide, please. We've highlighted three major goals for our department this year. Our primary goal is to support sustainability of this university. This goal represents how we plan to support the university's financial and operational health. We've planned a balanced budget for the fiscal year 2018-19. We will be working collaboratively across the organization to improve processes related to aligning the budget with the university's upcoming academic master plan, as well as existing capital plan and strategic plans. In addition, we'll be formalizing how we engage um, different uh, units with budget resource allocation. We are currently leading initiatives and other ways to strengthen the university's capacity for growth by improving administrative processes, introducing um, operational efficiencies, and generating cost savings. Transparency is our second major goal. We desire to expand the knowledge and understanding of the university's budget and the budget planning process. We've planned for um, university uh, campus meetings by hosting campus forums um, and engaging uh, different constituent groups on campus. So please check our administration and finance website for the actual dates and times for those budget forums. Our fiscal affairs team has planned training workshops. Most recently, our deans and department chairs participated in a fiscal training workshop um, in the last month. Next, we endeavor to improve our customer service to the campus community. And one of the ways we hope to do that is to develop key performance indicators where you, the campus, can hold us accountable to how we're delivering service to you. Included in that are going to be customer satisfaction surveys, some of which have been implemented in some of our units already. And our third major goal is engagement. I personally have began a listening tour around the campus community to hear the voices of what the needs are on campus as well as expectations of our team. We will be seeking to collaborate and consult with the campus community on several of the initiatives um, that we're moving forward with. We will be offering invitations to coordinate with us on the implementation of other initiatives that are driven by the Chancellor's Office as well as campus-focused initiatives. Our next slide, please. I'd also like to share with you some of those major initiatives that I just mentioned, which we believe will in, um, strengthen our institutional capacity uh, to address and to meet head on our plans for improving our enrollment for the campus um, community. Each project listed is grouped by the organization that's responsible for leading that initiative as well as responsible for delivering the expected benefits. There are initiatives that are going to be led by the Chancellor's Office, then there are initiatives that are campus specific to San Francisco State University, and then others that are only impacting the administration and finance department. One or more of the listed projects may have a direct or, impact, uh, direct or indirect impact on improving your work experience and may generate cost savings leading to a more operationally efficient and financially healthy university. If you'd like to learn more about these projects, you can find them on the administration and finance work website or you can contact the Office of the Vice President and CFO for more details. Thank you again for this opportunity to share our plans for this upcoming academic year. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the next speaker. Please welcome the Vice President of Student Affairs and Enrollment Management, Lolo Hong. Thank you, VP Carter. Aloha mai kako. Just want to take a moment and send our thoughts and prayers to our friends, family, and colleague who are in the islands of Hawaii as Hurricane Lane bears down on them fiercely today. Uh, so I want to thank the Academic Senate and the Office of the President for hosting this so that we can come together in community and recognize the start of another year. So happy new year. I want to begin by first introducing uh, two new members to uh, the executive team for Student Affairs and Enrollment Management. Yes. Shamina Harris uh, has started uh, this summer as our Interim Dean of Students. 
We are relaunching our search to find a permanent uh, associate vice president for student life and dean of students. But in the meantime, Shamita has graciously agreed to step up and serve in this important role. She's been at SS State for the last decade uh, and in prior roles was the assistant dean for student conduct and also the interim associate dean for student support. So thank you, Shamina. Our next member, newest member, uh, has been here almost a year, but was not here last year for convocation, so we're introducing him this year. Many of you know already Dr. Manuel Perez. He is the Assistant Vice President for Equity and Community Inclusion and Chief Diversity Officer. He's been in that interim role for the last year and will be conducting a search in the spring to fill the position on a permanent basis. He joined SAEM last September after serving eight years as Dean of Equity Programs and Pathways at American River College in his hometown of Sacramento. I'm assuming the slides are automatically appearing, so I'm just forging ahead. Okay, so I appreciate the opportunity to share some of the highlights. Obviously, we're all involved in so many things, but in the interest of time, I wanted to highlight some of the initiatives that I thought might be of particular interest to the broader campus community. The cabinet area of student affairs and enrollment management is comprised of six divisions, and those six divisions together incorporate 25 different programs and offices. So from the division of campus safety, I know that the concern about active threat is one that is on many of our minds. It's difficult to not watch the news and not consider that. So one area of focus this next year will be to continue to augment and improve our emergency preparedness response, and this will include in, uh, providing more training both in person and online in the coming academic year. So if you'd like a workshop, please contact uh, AVP and Chief of Police Jason Wu. The Division of Enrollment Management was an integral part of helping ensure that we reached our resident FTE target this past year, so congratulations to them in partnership with Academic Affairs and others. They will continue to co-lead efforts in support of Graduation Initiative 2025 with undergraduate education, with a special emphasis on closing the educational equity gap, which is one of our goals. They're also going to continue their work in process improvement to help ensure we can continue to meet our resident FTE target in the coming year. The Division of Equity and Community Inclusion is brand new. They are just a year old. Their birthday is this month. They're going to continue their work in establishing new centers to support our historically underserved and underrepresented students. This year, they're going to particularly focus on the Campus Climate Assessment Project, which launched last spring, and this fall will be a comprehensive quantitative survey to which all of you will receive an invitation to participate. So all staff, faculty, and students will be invited. Next is the Division of International Education. We are entering year three of a three-year international recruitment plan. Our goals are to also really increase study abroad, which is a high impact practice. Evidence continues to show that students who participate in study abroad are retained and graduate at higher uh, rates. So we're gonna really augment those efforts there. The Division of Student Affairs is taking the lead in ensuring that we respond to our students' basic needs, inclusive of safety at the most basic level, as well as mental health, but with a special attention to housing and food insecurity. So as we look at more data that shows this is a real concern for our students, research is also showing that students who are hungry and concerned about where they're gonna stay each night are not gonna be as actively engaged nor as successful as students. So we do wanna augment our efforts here. And then finally, the Division of Student Life, formerly known as the Offices of the Dean of Students. They're going to focus on building a networked web of support for our students. The Dean on Call Initiative pilot program was launched this past spring. Based on our evaluation, we're going to continue and expand that. And the goal there is to create a case management system so that students who are in distress, whose issues fall over more than one unit, have a place to go and a person will be making sure that they're receiving all of the assistance that they need rather than depart because we failed to meet those gaps. I also wanna share one highlight from equity programs and compliance. I supervise that office in my capacity as your Title IX coordinator and discrimination, harassment, retaliation administrator, otherwise known as DHR. Uh, and in addition to the many things that they're doing, one area of focus is uh, the convening of a work group. Students, staff, faculty, and administrators are on that membership, and they are going into their second semester of studying the issue of bullying 
on campus, and the charge of the work group is to deliver a set of recommended policies and procedures for President Wong's consideration at the end of this calendar year. So uh, definitely be on the lookout for consultation on those documents. So I just want to say thank you, and with that, I'd like to introduce my fellow colleague, Vice President for University Advancement, Robert Nava. Thank you. Thank you, VP Hong. Good morning. You know, to our, our new faculty and staff, un abrazo fuerte y bienvenidos. You know, a, a warm embrace to our new faculty and staff and, and welcome to campus. I'm Robert Nava and I have the privilege of, of leading the University Advancement Division here on campus. And for our colleagues that are not familiar with advancement, let me just take a moment and share with you our focus and mission. But advancement is, was established to support San Francisco State University's goals by enhancing its institutional reputation. We have great faculty and great students. And part of our job is to tell that story about this incredible institution. We also raise public awareness. We build goodwill with constituents across the Bay and across the country, frankly. And the next thing we do is we raise private funds to support the faculty through philanthropic support. And finally, we provide service to the president, the deans, the academic leadership, and the academic senate. We're comprised of seven units with a professional staff of 60. And these are amazing colleagues that I get to work with. And we focus in several areas. I'd like to just point out quickly a few of these units that do such an important job. We have the Office of Development. The Development Office and the fundraising team work closely with the deans and the faculty to raise philanthropic support for the colleges and for the other divisions on campus. Last year, thanks to the support of our alumni and, and special friends of the university, the Development Office raised almost $19 million to support scholarships, faculty support, and other programmatic uh, programs. We also are engaged in the third year of our very first comprehensive campaign. But I'm not going to say too much about it. I'm going to leave that to our president, who will give you an update on the campaign for San Francisco State. The other unit, very important work, is governmental and community relations. We have two great colleagues that build relationships in Sacramento. We could say that our largest donor is Sacramento, our legislators, because most of our operating budget comes from Sacramento, and we've got to build and maintain those relationships. But also with the historic election of London Breed in this city, we have a new opportunity to build relationships with the county and city of San Francisco and the surrounding cities, and our staff in governmental relations spend a lot of time strategizing, building relationships, and telling the San Francisco State story. Advancement services, we have colleagues that are in some ways behind the scenes, but they are the energy that makes this division run. They help process all the gifts that are generated through philanthropic support. They do reports to our donors for stewardship, letting them know that their investment in our students and faculty are having the impact that they intended. And we also have the San Francisco State Foundation, which is a 501c3 auxiliary. The foundation is comprised of 32 members. Half of those volunteers are alumni, the other half are very special friends of this university. And the foundation manages the $92 million endowment with a plan to grow that to 100 million by December of this year. We're gonna increase that endowment to 100 million by December of this year. Faculty, write that down and hold me accountable. This morning, I'm delighted to introduce three new colleagues who are joining the advancement team. And the very first one is alumni relations. Thank you. <laughs> this is great. I'm delighted. You know, how we engage our constituents and alumni are, are, are critical. We have over 300,000 alumni across the United States and internationally. Last year, we did a very extensive search to find a dynamic leader to take us to that next level. We're delighted that Catlin Tramwell joined San Francisco State 
We were fortunate to recruit her away from Barnard College, where she was the executive director of alumni relations at Barnard. And Catalin now joins us and will be leading our, our, both our alumni relations and building our annual giving program. Catalin, welcome. Would you stand, please? <laughs> you know, the university does an amazing events every year, uh, like this convocation. But we also do uh, special uh, events for President Wong and, and, and for the deans, where we host international visitors, elected officials, um, uh, international government, government officials. And we're very fortunate that we have a colleague, Nicole Lang, who has been very instrumental in helping us organize university events. So this year, with the president's support in the cabinet, we established a new function, a new unit within advancement. Nicole will be leading our efforts both in university events and protocol. And Nicole has been with the campus for three years. We were fortunate that we were able to recruit her away from a business organization where she was doing great work here in the city. She's also an alumna of San Francisco State. And faculty and staff, for those of you that may know, one of Nicole's projects is also organizing commencement every year at AT&T Park. Where we, where we celebrate the seven, 8,000 graduates and their 35,000 family members and friends at AT&T Park. It's an inspirational event. So Nicole, thank you, and would you stand? Nicole Lang. <laughs> Our third colleague, marketing and strategic communications faculty. We've got to tell the story of San Francisco State much more effectively. This is a great university with a great history. The impact that we have in the Bay Area, in California, and nationally is really profound. And we need to tell that story much more strategically. So we have a very dynamic team which uh, oversees our marketing efforts, that is developing our brand, protecting our brand, and telling our story. I'm delighted that Mary Kenny has stepped forward as our interim associate vice president for marketing and strategic communications. Mary, would you please stand? Thank you. To our faculty and to our staff, I'm gonna close by inviting you to please stop by our offices. We are located on the first floor of the administration building. So the development office, governmental relations, marketing, advancement services, Alumni Relations, we're there and we're open. Please stop by and introduce yourselves. Tell us more about you and let us tell you how we can support the good work of our faculty and our academic leaders. And with that, I will conclude and I will turn it over to my colleague, Vice President Jason Porth. Jason. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Vice President Nava. I'm really delighted to be with you all today to share some really exciting news. It's not so often that someone gets to share that there's construction underway at SF State. And um, about 100 yards behind me, there is an active demolition going on right now, which I'll talk a little bit about. But this is really going to be such an exciting year for us all as we see some transformation take place. But first, what is University Enterprises? It's the newest cabinet division formed uh, just about a year ago now. And it was really formed with the recognition that not enough is happening to deliver the places and the spaces that you all deserve and that our students deserve. And the, the places for study, for research, for scholarship, for housing. We've been relying on the state for so many years to provide us with the resources to build buildings. And we're sick of waiting. And we'll continue to take money when it comes from the state, of course. Um, We'll gladly take it, uh, but we also have to find new and entrepreneurial ways to do so. And to address this need, President Wong created the University Enterprises Cabinet Division, which marries together a couple of different efforts that the campus has had for many, many years. But by putting them together, we're hoping that some magic's going to happen, much like the slides. 
Um, we are, one of the things that is being married together is the University Corporation. Since 1944, UCorp has been the campus's business partner as a public um, benefit corporation, doing a lot of work to support activities on campus, including um, one of the first large-scale uh, building projects that we saw um, on campus that delivered student housing. The Village was built by University Corporation um, well over, almost two, actually almost two decades ago now. And so with University Corporation's business acumen and ability to find unique financing streams, we're going to couple that with the capital planning, design, and construction, which is the, the building entity on this campus. And I'm delighted to announce that one of the, the key things that's come out of that so far through this partnership is 560 units, excuse me, 560 beds or 170 units of student housing that will be open for occupancy in October 2020, excuse me, uh, September 2020 for the beginning of next uh, two school years from now. So that's an extraordinary achievement. So with two years of construction on that project, we'll have 560 more students able to live on this campus. They'll be um, paying uh, a, a very reasonable rent. The university will collect ground rent to support our activities. And all this is being done without state money, even without state bonds. And that's a very new approach to delivery. And something, as you all know, and our students desperately know, is that we need to provide more housing for students, faculty, and staff. And as we create 560 beds of student housing, we're able to free up units that students are currently in that could be occupied by faculty and staff. So this is, uh, it's a step in the right direction. We know it's not the, the, um, the only step, it's just the first one. So I was sitting next to Dean Alvarez and, and he said to me that he loves the name University Enterprises. And sometimes when I mention the name, I get um, uh, a question of, there's no, it's not very descriptive. But I love how Alvin views it as, um, he thinks of Star Trek when he thinks of our name. And uh, <laughs> Alvin, I'll take it, because you know, it's to boldly go, right? And we're, <laughs> I love that. And I, I think we're, <laughs> I think we might even put the, the enterprise on our business cards. And Alvin and I were joking that, you know, I, I said, we have the U for USS Enterprise. And I said, maybe I'll borrow a couple of S's from HSS, because we, <laughs> could then be USS Enterprise. So our division includes uh, the corporation, as I mentioned, uh, CPDC, or Capital Planning, Design, and Construction, uh, a real estate development division, uh, a sustainability and energy group, and then, of course, the downtown campus operations. Uh, as we were coming in this morning, I had the pleasure of running into our longtime colleague from Associated Students, Muada Kenyatta. And Muada, I asked him how long he's been on campus. He said, since 1980. And I was going to say to him, gosh, Mwata, you must have seen a lot of change. And then I realized, no, he hasn't, right? We haven't built a lot of buildings. <laughs> and so um, I'm, it's really great to be able to say that in this next year, he's going to see three projects that are all going to have started, right? So there's the Holloway Project, which I mentioned. There's the Liberal and Creative Arts Building, uh, which will house Becca, as well as um, classrooms and offices, um, labs, some really exciting things, a four-story building just, um, just behind me and which will open in fall 2020. And then the other one that I'm really excited to share is uh, the University Club. And this is something that has been missing from this campus for over a decade now. For those who've been around a little bit longer than a decade, you'll remember that we used to have a, a university club that stood where the library retrieval system now stands. And it was, um, that building was demolished to make way for an expanded library. And we are delighted to be able to announce that a university club will reopen this academic year at the end of this semester. And it's a fascinating collaborative partnership with the University Corporation, um, as well as the Academic Senate, the College of Business, and the Vista Room all coming together to find ways to bring our faculty and staff an important place to meet, to gather, to eat, to meet with students when they wish to in the space as well. Um, it'll also provide a really wonderful space for our students who have an interest in hospitality management to get some experience in a venue that's actually um, providing services to our campus community. So with all of that, I also offer an apology. Um, and that is that construction is loud and dusty. Uh, and often we see uh, some rodents who, you know, come out of holes that we didn't know existed. Um, there, there's going to be some noise that we know is disruptive. We'll mitigate that to the best that we are able, um, but please view it as a sign of progress. I certainly do. Thanks so much for your time. All right.
thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. I hope you did as well, hearing what's going on in the various cabinet areas. So now we're going to turn to hearing from our college deans and unit heads about uh, some things that are going on in their units and as well as meet some of our new faculty hires that hopefully you'll see around campus in the coming academic year. So uh, first up, I'm going to ask our brand new athletic director, Stephanie Shreve Hawkins, to come up and introduce uh, some of what's going on in athletics. Thank you, Dr. Gerber, and thank you for all your work and your assistance work on this. This is incredible. I am very honored to be here in front of the faculty. I've been here for four months now, and I would like to say welcome to you, but I think I'm more of in the hello stage. So I want to say hello, and I want to invite you all to my office, which is over in Gym 102, just to stop by and say hello so I can put a name with a face. Um, the coaches are we consider instructors of the body and you are all instructors of the mind and it's incredible when that combination comes together how successful our student athletes can not only be on the court and on the field but also um, in the classroom and in their lives um, i believe i have a few slides here but i wanted to talk a little bit about our accolades um, and our we're very honored to have a high GPA collectively of 3.15 for all of our student athletes. It's one of the top in the nation, so that just gives us more esteem and more um, prowess and to be proud of our student athletes and realize that we are, um, that we're in fact an academic institution that supports athletics and not the other way around. So, and that's one huge reason of why I chose to come here. One of my first, and actually, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but I, I snuck in a week early before my hire so I could go to the athletic award ceremony. And I was just so impressed and taken back by how many amazing student athletes we have here, but also the faculty who support those student athletes. The student athletes would come up and introduce a special faculty member that is a mentor to them and support to them. Um, their coaches were also there. So it's just our student athletes are living examples of what can happen and the success that can happen when you combine the mind and body and what that can do in terms of confidence, respect for each other, and then moving on in life to be good citizens. So um, it's amazing to me. It's why I am in my position. It's why I love to be in higher education and athletics. Um, but I'm proud to be at a university where the coaches and faculty are successful in fostering that environment and that the student athletes can balance their goals of mind and body and then have the most positive outcomes for their endeavors. Uh, we hear a lot about what they do on the field and the awards that they get and we have many and I didn't want to touch on that today. I wanted to touch more on some of the accolades that we have nationally. You know, um, you hear a lot about our track and field program and how they were seventh in the nation and they started as first in the nation and all these amazing, amazing feats that they were able to accomplish. Um, but they also happen to be um, our top GPA in our athletic department. We also um, were recognized with the U.S. Track and Field Cross Countries Association. We had 25 student athletes who were recognized nationally with that. You have to have a 3.3 or higher in order to achieve that. Um, and then our baseball program. So they went on to be the very, very first time with the um, California Collegiate Athletic Conference and going to the championship. And, and it was the very first time ever. But it was also the very first time that we had an All-American, um, an academic All-American in that sport, um, as well as they were recognized nationally for, um, for the accolades that they had with their combined GPA um, from the from the Baseball Coaches Association. So it just goes to show that they go together, right? Mind and body. And if you have that success and that support um, that you can achieve the highest, the highest accomplishments. So um, I want to thank our coaches for their part that they play. We have 10 head coaches and 13 assistant coaches who work with these student athletes on a daily basis to instruct them, not only through their sport, but through their academics and through life. 
And then I would like to thank you all as faculty for supporting that endeavor, and for understanding the balance that the student athletes have, and for um, having high expectations for them, even though they do have that balance. So that's appreciated. Um, and then also, moving on, so speaking of faculty, the NCAA uh, requires that um, in our membership and um, for our charge that we have a faculty athletic representative. And the faculty athletic re representative is an NCAA position that provides checks and balances for the integrity of the department, not only from an eligibility, progress towards degree and all of that, academic honesty, but also just to be a mentor that the student athletes know and the coaches know and they can go to and bounce things off of from an academic standpoint and from a life skills standpoint. So we are very honored to have Dr. Nicole Bolter from the kinesiology department. She's been working with, Nicole, you're here. Where are you? Stand up, please. So Nicole's in the back. <laughs> And I have a little bias against Nicole because I've known her when she was a student athlete. She was also on the search committee that hired me. So <laughs> we started off on the right foot. But she's been um, a tremendous amount of support and um, she serves on the executive committee for our conference and she's recognized nationally. So I can't thank her enough for her guidance and her support. Um, it gives us that integrity and that outside person to check in with and then also have the connection with the faculty. Um, so I'm indeed honored to be here. My number one goal is to build our athletic community. It's to build our student athletes community and it's to be a part of the greater community on campus. And so the more that we can reach out to each other and have that symbiotic relationship between faculty and staff, student athletes and those who support the student athletes and all of the students here, I believe that we're just gonna be a much better program. So I invite you all to come out to our events. I know many of you have. All faculty and staff get into our events for free with your ID card, so please come and check it out. We do have a website, which is www.sfstategators.com, and you can read more about the academic accolades and the athletic accolades and see the schedule and make sure that you stop by and build that relationship with us and we will build that relationship with you. So I thank you for all that you do. I thank our coaches for being an integral part of that instruction. And um, with that, go Gators. <laughs> In fact, um, when I say go, you say Gators. Go. Gators. Go. Gators. I love it. All right, next I will introduce um, from our College of Business, I have the pleasure of introducing our interim dean, Yim Yu Wong. Thank you, Director Sherry Hawkins. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Um, thank you for coming to this convocation. Um, in the last year, the College of Business has been putting in a lot of efforts in building a um, meaningful and wonderful educational environment for our students. To that end, we brought in several new staff and administrative members, and I would like to introduce all of them to you. So, thank you. So Ms. Cassie Forte, marketing specialist, and is also a Gator. She earned a bachelor's degree in business administration at San Francisco State University. Cassie? I saw her earlier, right there, <laughs> right? So. <laughs> um, um, Sandra Henau, executive director of business development and marketing. Sandra came to us with a lot of corporate and um, educational institute experience. So Sandra, there, yeah, so, all right, so. Ashley Wolf, she is um, Administrative Office Coordinator and is also a Gator. She earned an undergraduate degree in Labor and Employment Studies. So, Ashley. <laughs> Next. Mr. Fibroto Javier Garcia, he is, um, his responsibilities is in Career Service and Program Coordinator. And um, Javier is also a Gator, and in fact, he is currently a, uh, a master's student in counseling. So Javier, welcome. 
So two more then. Thank you. So no applause until the end. <laughs> so next is um, Ms. Yuan Ring Li, Operations Coordinator. She's also a Gator and earned a bachelor's degree in business administration. Last but not the least is Denise Klein Richard, our interim associate dean, um, who's also a professor in management, but some of you may know her better as the director of the Center for Ethical and Sustainable Business. So let's give them all a good round of applause. So. Next, the College of Business is entering another exciting year. So I would like to highlight two events that will be coming up for your attention. The first one is the Women's Emerging Leadership Forum, which will be held on September 21st, 2018. This is our fifth year of hosting this event, and we're very proud that we're the organizer of this event. Next is the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Fellows Program. This program is a platform open to students of all majors on campus. Its goal is helping students grow innovation and entrepreneurship skills and mindset. Next, I would like to introduce our new faculty members at the College of Business. And I want to first thank all the departments and all the hiring committees who make this possible for us. Professor Robert Bonner of Management earned his PhD from the University of Texas at San Antonio. His academic interests include micro-foundation strategy, management education, gender and diversity, Robert will be teaching strategic management in fall 2018. Next, Professor Tai Yin Chin of Information Systems received his PhD at Claremont Graduate University. His research and teaching areas include user training, technology enhanced collaborative learning, and business intelligence. Tai Yin also likes board games and chess. Next, Professor Guillaume Fadou of Information Systems earned his doctoral degree from Claremont Graduate University. His academic interests include information sharing, human computer interactions, and persuasive technology. Persuasive technology. Something interesting, I need to take that class. <laughs> so, and he also likes practicing Brazilian jiu-jitsu and hiking. Next. Professor Wai Hong of Accounting received her PhD from Arizona State University. Her academic interests are corporate voluntary disclosure, financial reporting, and insider trading. Wei will be teaching managerial accounting in fall 2018. Next, Professor Priyanka Joshi of Management graduated from the University of Southern California. Her teaching interests are gender and leadership, power and status, and communications and management. Priyanka will be teaching leadership and influence skills in fall 2018. Next, Professor Tao Yao Tian Li of Accounting earned his PhD from McMaster University. His academic interests include cybersecurity breach and disclosure, information assurance, and corporate governance and social responsibilities. Yesterday, we received the good news that Tao Yao Tian was awarded a discovery grant from the Nat Natural Sciences of Engineering Research Council of Canada. Congratulations to you, Ten, and what a way to start your new career here. Next, Professor Joanne Soft of Accounting graduated from the Essex Business School. Her academic interests include anti-corruption and fraud efforts, dialogic accounting, and accountability. Joanne is also a very active member of community service. Next, Professor Veronica Silvero of Economics earned her PhD from UCLA. Her academic interests range from social networks, economics of higher education, to household decision making. Veronica enjoys running and good food. <laughs> Next, Professor Dana Walker of Management received her PhD from Claremont Graduate University. Her academic areas are leadership perception, attachment theory at work, and mentoring. She will be teaching organization design and change in fall 2018. Next, Professor Brian Yang of Finance received his PhD from UC Irvine. 
His research and teaching interests include financial institutions, investment, mo and monetary policy. Brian also enjoys tennis, hiking, and spending time with his family. And I want to thank all of the new faculty members joining the College of Business. Now I would like to introduce to you my colleague, Dr. Cynthia Grudzik, Dean of Graduate College of Education. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And Happy New Year. I like that. And uh, greetings on behalf of the faculty and staff in the Graduate College of Education. I'm Cindy Grutzik, and so glad to be the new Dean of the Graduate College of Education this year. And I want to begin by saying a big thank you to Dr. Nancy Robinson, who served for the last two years uh, as interim Dean of the Graduate College of Education and did such a great job of bringing this college forward, keeping it together, and really setting a positive tone for the years to come. So thank you to Nancy Robinson. The Graduate College of Education is very focused on making sure every child has an excellent teacher every year and a team of teachers every year who loves them, will help them learn, and that every school has, every family has a school that welcomes and supports them, valuing their culture, their language, and individual needs. We prepare the whole school team, teachers, leaders, specialists, staff, our programs develop superintendents, data and tech specialists, instructional leaders to support strong school districts. To that end, the Graduate College recommended 443 credentials last year in 2017-18, uh, making us one of the most significant providers of educators in the region. So I want to use my time today to briefly highlight two areas in our college, the undergraduate teaching pathways and doctoral programs, bookends. So the Graduate College of Education's undergraduate pathways into teaching are very important because in California, licensing is mostly a post-baccalaureate effort. So we have to make sure that anyone who wants to be an educator knows how to find us and get to our college and complete these programs. So there are approved subject matter programs in many of the majors on this campus, including a brand new one, the elementary subject matter program that was approved after extensive collaboration led by Nancy Robinson across three colleges. These allow students to waive the CSET exam and complete that subject matter requirement by doing coursework in the major, which we think is a really strong pathway. So thank you to everyone who's worked on those, and I know in the sciences they're working on those right now. We have minors in education and in special education to introduce undergraduates to our credential programs and to maybe spark some ideas about being educators that they hadn't had before. And I think even more to make sure that a broad group of people really understands as much as possible about how teaching and education works. Uh, we have a bachelor's degree in the Graduate College of Education, the Communicative Disorders Bachelor's Degree, and a, that leads to a credential. And last year, we recommended 32 new speech and language pathology teachers. This is a high need area in California, in our region. So we're really proud to be turning out these new educators. The IBEST program, which is the Integrated Bilingual Educators for S Social Transformation, is working to create a very clear pathway from liberal studies and child and adolescent development into elementary teaching. This is part of a trend in California to develop four and five year integrated programs that start early on with teacher preparation, not waiting till the end of a, of a person's development to build that, but really to start early on. And then finally, I want to just mention that our Teach Center's doors are always open to anyone who's interested in becoming an educator and to seeking advice and finding out more. So come on by any time to the Teach Center. And next, on the other end of our education spectrum, the Graduate College of Education has two long-standing doctoral programs. And these are so important in terms of developing leaders in the region and build, having them build networks across their areas that are super important for uh, student success, for faculty success, and for um, education in the region. So the Joint PhD in Special Education has been around for 50 years. It's celebrating its 50th year. Uh, this is a joint program with UC Berkeley. 
that prepares faculty for special education fields, again, another high need area in California and in fact in the nation. We currently have 20 students enrolled in the program. UC Berkeley has others as well. Um, and we see this as a very significant program that we have. And then we also have our education doctorate in education leadership, which is celebrating its 10th full year as an independent doctoral program. It was one of the first round of doctoral programs that started in the CSU 10 years ago. We have over 70 candidates enrolled in this program now, and I met them last Saturday at their orientation. What a dynamic group, so exciting and encouraging to see them. Uh, we have, it's a three-year cohorted program structured for working professionals, so if you know anyone or if any of you are interested, I encourage you to check this out. And uh, we see it as very significant in terms of providing local leadership for our districts and for our community colleges and even for our campus. So thank you. I really look forward to this year ahead of working with my associate dean, Dr. Rob Williams, the department chairs, the faculty and staff in the college, and I can't wait to meet the students next week. Thanks again, and let me introduce uh, my colleague, Dr. Alex. Alex who? <laughs> Uh, morning, and uh, I'm honored to join San Francisco State about two months ago and be part of College Extended Learning. And College Extended Learning has long history in the CSU, and I think in the San Francisco State, we see ourselves to be able to provide the student who can join our campus, connect to the excellent teaching experience we have, and the faculty to offer them a chance uh, to uh, recruit themselves and overcome the challenge, and uh, hopefully they can um, reach a goal and a career and, and change their life. So we are located in the downtown campus. It's 835 Market Street. It's in Westfield Shopping Mall. So if you haven't been there, we are on the sixth floor. I encourage everybody to seek us out, we welcome faculty, staff, and, and we would like to partner with you and to create opportunity. And the goal for this year really to reach out all the academic college and hopefully we can get some new idea and, and make things happen. And next I would like to introduce some of our new colleagues in the college. And the first is our associate dean, Angie Lipshoes. And she is in charge of program development and the faculty support. She has extensive knowledge in terms of creating an innovative program. The second is Julie Bryden, and she has been in college for the last five years, but now she's taking on the director's special project and in charge of uh, the conference services and IT support, so will help us better utilize our facility. The next one is Alec Chan, and again, he uh, returned to San Francisco State, was started San Francisco State about 10 years ago as our director of recruitment partner relationship, and uh, he is in charge of our marketing communication and, and recruitment for both domestic and international. The last one is Saroj Queen, is our director of global engagement, and. Again, she is in charge of our uh, international programming for short term and uh, also certificate program for our international students. So I'd like to uh, talk about some of our priority for uh, year 2018 and 19. We have a lot of demand in terms of regionally and uh, both in the state of California and the nationally for the people who will have, who need the four year uh, uh, college degree in order to enter workforce. By 2025, uh, California alone, we will have shortage of about one million four year graduate, uh, graduate we need. So hopefully San Francisco State will be the beacon and provide those opportunity for, the, for, for those students who are seeking the four year degree. So we would like to partner with college, develop some online degree completion, both in in the bachelor level and also professional certificate. At the same time, our college really would like to create opportunity for students who outside of the United States just like to experience the San Francisco State while we can offer short term and between three months, a master, a year. 
So we will launch the Master of San Francisco uh, State University. So basic student can come here, stay for up to 12 months, and they can earn academic credit, bring back to their home country, or they really love us. We hope they join us, matriculate to the state side. Last, and we will continue uh, emphasize customer training workshop. We currently provide about 30 customer training for our international partner. And one of the newest addition will be uh, Shanghai Metro from city of Shanghai, the largest metro system. We will train their middle management, hopefully continues a partnership with them. And so again, I really like uh, to encourage the faculty as, you know, seeking extended learning out and see if you have any new idea, doesn't matter how small, how crazy, you know, we would like to hear from you. And now I have the honor to introduce my colleague, College Extended the Ethnic Study Intern Dean, Amy Sui Yoshi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we do not have any fa new faculty hires in the College of Ethnic Studies this year, but we will have two hires in the coming year, which we're very excited about, so stay tuned. I'm standing here today, more importantly, to invite all of you to our 50th anniversary events. The core theme. The core theme is Ethnic Studies 50 Years and Beyond. It encourages us to remember the past, engage with the present, and plan for the future to advance the College of Ethnic Studies and invigorate movements for racial and economic justice. We've created a coordinating committee for a year of events commemorating the 50th anniversaries of the BSU and the TWLF student-led strikes, the longest such strike in the nation's history, as well as the birth of ethnic studies. This past spring, we opened invitations to the larger university and community to participate, and we'll be resending those invitations out through several media sites, including Campus Memo in the coming week. The 50th Anniversary Coordinating Committee will both create events and serve as a clearinghouse for additional events created by friends of the college. Fall semester will primarily focus on social movements historically and how they, how they manifest now in relationship to ethnic studies. Spring semester will focus on the history and trajectory of the field of ethnic studies. There's a 50th anniversary website that is accessible through the College of Ethnic Studies main webpage, which includes a common calendar of events. The number of events will grow as the year continues. We invite you to hold November 8th through the 10th November 15th through the 17th, as well as March 21 through the 23rd for major highlighted events. Again, for anyone who wishes to participate on the committee or submit an event, please go to our website or contact our office. We look forward to seeing you at the 50th. Thank you. I'd like to now introduce the Dean of the College of Health and Social Sciences, Alvin Alvarez. Good morning. I, I feel a little nervous up here. I feel Nancy Gerber's eyes bearing down upon me. Uh, and, and so I would really, I could use your help here. Please, I know you'll want to do this, but please do not applaud for my faculty until I tell you to do so. So help, help, help me out. Uh, the College of Health and Social Sciences is uh, a college of healers and change agents. And hopefully as I go through this list, you will see how that is self-evident. But, but, but again, don't applaud for them until I tell you. Let's start off. Dr. Leah Bagastero joins us in the Department of Kinesiology with an expertise in biomechanics and human movement, and you will see through her experience on the Brazilian national volleyball team and her love of off-road motorcycling and skydiving, she is all about movement. <laughs> Dr. Angelica Camacho 
will be joining the School of Public Affairs and Civic Engagement and teaching in the criminal justice program. It was the injustices present in her community and her desire to understand and transform them that inspired her to pursue her ethnic studies degree. Her current research is on the Pelican Bay, California prisoner hunger strike. Dr. Karina Gallo also joins the School of Public Affairs and Civic Engagement with an expertise in historical and international trends in crime and welfare policy. Before this, she was a social worker, a policy evaluator, a leader in the nonprofit community, while still making time for one of her greatest joys in life, salsa music and salsa dancing. Dr. Ivana Markova is jo I think that was her chair. <laughs> I know that was Connie. <laughs> is joining the Department of Family Interiors, Nutrition and Apparel, but she has been teaching with us for over 10 years and is a master teacher of courses in textile science, research methods, and consumer behavior. Ivana, welcome to the tenure track. Dr. Aritri Samanta is joining the School of Public Affairs and Civic Engagement, most recently from Purdue University. Dr. Samanta works in the areas of governance and collaboration in regional watershed systems, urban governance, and community resilience, and for fun, she loves photographing city life and people, and she'll have plenty of that in this city. Dr. Paige Viren is a welcome addition to the Department of Recreation, Parks, and Tourism with a research interest in consumer behavior and tourism and a focus on adventure travel and sustainable community-based tourism areas. And being the adventure traveler herself, she proudly claims that she has traveled to six out of the seven continents and I think Antarctica is on next on the bucket list. Dr. Zubeda Kumar comes to us most recently. Wow, okay. Your, Nancy's going to kill me. You, you need to stop that. <laughs> Dr. Zubeda Kumar comes to us most recently from UCSF with a background in nutrition from Texas A&M. Her most recent work is on the mediators of cardiovascular disease among South Asians. And like any good dietitian, she is testing out her green thumb this year and planning to grow a variety of herbs and vegetables. And uh, last but certainly not least, Dr. Andy Yao joins the Department of Kinesiology with an expertise in adapted physical education and activity and exercise and sports psychology. His research is on the motivation of physical activity with individuals with disabilities. Now, his prior faculty position was in Arkadelphia, Arkansas, and uh, he tells me he's very, very happy to be here. <laughs> I have no idea where Arkadelphia is, but I do believe him. So uh, please join me in giving a round of applause. Now you can do it. I'd like to welcome and invite to the stage my dear friend and colleague, Dean Andrew Harris of the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. Andy? Thank you, Dean Alvarez, and good morning. Good morning. <laughs> In the College of Liberal and Creative Arts, the College of Ideas, also known as the Behemoth College and that monster, uh, we have, and the place that I am so proud to call home, we have hired a new development director, uh, Amanda Todd. I'm sorry, Cozy, we took her away, but Amanda is here somewhere, I think. Uh, Amanda, are you here? Yeah. Yeah. We have started a new faculty professional development program uh, this year uh, on the strength of a faculty committee. Uh, and we are expanding last year's highly successful undergraduate research showcase into a comprehensive program of student and faculty support. And yes, we are also fundraising and working on the final touches for the new LCA building. We could not be more proud uh, and thrilled about the building that will serve the whole campus. Um, I would be remiss in bringing it up uh, without thanking uh, President Wong, Provost Summit, uh, Vice President Nava, uh, Vice President Porth, 
uh, all the people in capital planning, Barry, Jill, Wendy, Maritza, uh, and all of your colleagues, um, it takes a lot of people, uh, even, even, to get to site preparation. Uh, um, uh, and all I can say uh, at this point is uh, science, uh, brace yourself and buckle up. Um, I heard uh, uh, a little rumor that XCOM was measuring the square feet uh, of the dean's office uh, in the new building. Um, I just want to assure you all that the sauna and wet bar are completely within CSU guidelines. <laughs> it's now my honor to introduce the incoming faculty in the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. Uh, of course, please hold your applause. Uh, Siwon Byun joins us as an assistant professor of international relations. She earned her doctorate at the George Washington University. Her teaching and research interests are in geopolitical relations between Korea, China, and Japan. Anna Lourdes Cardenas joins our journalism department as an assistant professor. She received her MFA in creative writing from the University of Texas at El Paso and comes to us from New Mexico State University in Las Cruces. She has an extensive background in teaching and many years of experience working as a journalist on both sides of the US-Mexico border. Rebecca Eisler joins us as an assistant professor of political science. She received her doctorate from the University of Texas at Austin. Her research interests are in public policy process and interinstitutional agenda setting dynamics. Bridget Gelms joins the English department as an assistant professor of composition and rhetoric. She received her doctorate from Miami University. Her research and teaching interests are in digital rhetoric, professional writing, composition pedagogies, feminist rhetorics, and social media. Constance Gordon, an alumna an alum of San Francisco State University, joins the communication studies department as an assistant professor. She returns to us from the University of Colorado at Boulder, where she received her doctorate. Her areas of research are in justice and food security. Laura Green joins us as an assistant professor in the School of Cinema. She completed her MFA in documentary film and video at Stanford University. She's a director and editor of character-driven documentary feature films and web episodes that explore social issues with humor and complexity. Arazu Islami joins our philosophy department as an assistant professor. She received her doctorate at Stanford University. Her research addresses the relationship, uh, the philosophical relationship between math and physics and how they apply to the world. Michael David Lucas joins us as an assistant professor of creative writing. He received his MFA from the University of Maryland and comes to us from teaching at the University of San Francisco. He has written two books of fiction, many short stories, and numerous nonfiction essays. Sean McFarlane joins us as an assistant professor in the School of Art. He received his MFA in photography uh, at the California College of the Arts. His creative work examines photography's inability to represent the landscape and its unsettling cultural legacies. Catherine Morrissey joins us as an assistant professor in the School of Cinema. She received her doctorate from the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee and comes to us uh, most recently from the University of Kentucky. Her teaching and research interests are in participatory and digital culture, digital humanities and gender, sexuality, and cultural studies. Alex Neville, hired last year, started in January, joined the School of Cinema in January of 2018 as an assistant professor in cinematography and filmmaking. He received his doctorate from the Center for Moving Image Research at the University of the West of England. His research investigates technological, cultural, and aesthetic orchestrations of light in a range of cinematic forms, including creative fiction, experimental nonfiction, and moving image art. Shabnam Piri Pirier joins us as an assistant professor in the Becca department. She comes to us from UC Riverside, where she received her PhD. Her research interests include comparative literature, media, Iranian literature, critical race studies, post-colonial and decolonization studies, and political violence. Wendy Salkin joins our philosophy department as an assistant professor. She received her PhD in philosophy from Harvard University. Her teaching experiences include Harvard, Stanford, and San Francisco State University. Her primary areas of interest are social and political philosophy, ethics, philosophy of law, and philosophy of race. Please welcome these new faculty to the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. I actually didn't breathe during that <laughs> recitation. Uh, it is now my honor to introduce Debbie Masters, University Librarian. Thank you, Andy, and good morning to you all. I have three new colleagues to introduce. The first is Christy Stevens, who is the new Associate University Librarian who started with us in April. 
She has a master's degree in library and information science from the University of Iowa, a master's in English from UC Irvine, a master's in women's studies at San Diego State. She's done some work toward an EDD, never stops. She comes to us from being the associate dean in the library at CSU Dominguez Hills and had previous positions at Cal Poly Pomona and Sac State. She knows the CSU. Are you out there somewhere, Christy? Anyway. I know, I'm not supposed to applaud yet, but. So we have two new library faculty members who are unable to be with us today because their start dates are a little later. The first is Callie Brandstetter. She will start August the 31st as a senior assistant librarian. She has her master's in library science from the University of Southern Mississippi, and she will serve as the first year experience and undergraduate student success librarian with liaison responsibilities for the FYE programming and library support for FYE seminars, Metro Academies, and other lower division courses. She comes to us from her previous position as undergraduate engagement librarian at the University of Kansas Library. Her academic interests include information literacy for undergraduate students, critical librarianship, and library contributions to the first year experience. Our other new faculty member is Jordan Nielsen, who won't start until September 24th, but he did come to new faculty orientation, met all his new faculty in the College of Business. He will come as associate librarian with a master's in information sciences and also an MBA from the University of Tennessee. He will be the business librarian serving the College of Business and library faculty liaison to international business, economics, management, marketing, accounting, finance, hospitality and tourism management. He won't have much to do. His previous positions include business and entrepreneurship librarian at Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, and also entrepreneurship, marketing, and business data librarian at San Diego State. His academic interests include business information literacy, academic entrepreneurship, and user engagement. I hope you will join me in welcoming our new tenure track faculty when they join us shortly. Thank you. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the Interim Dean of the College of Science and Engineering, Carmen Domingo. I didn't realize we were gonna have a magical computer over there. So, anyways, uh, buenos dias. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So it's really a pleasure to be here and to introduce uh, our new faculty uh, in the College of Science and Engineering. Um, but first, I also wanted to introduce our new Associate Dean, uh, Ron Marski, who is joining us from, he was the Department Chairman of Physics and Astronomy, um, and we're just delighted to welcome him to our leadership team. Um, So it's really exciting to introduce these new faculty because it was my first year to be involved in the entire process of hiring faculty in our college. And so I'm truly delighted to introduce uh, our, these faculty that will be joining us. They really uh, reflect some very exciting areas of scholarship and research in our college. Okay, so the first one is Abir al Jahar. Um, she is um, going to be joining computer, the Department of Computer Science. Uh, she got her PhD um, from the University of North uh, Carolina, Charlotte. Um, and her interests are smartphone security, web app security, and computer science education. Next is Ivan Anastaso. Uh, he will be joining the Department of Biology. He got his PhD at um, City University in New York. Uh, he comes from UCSF where he has been doing uh, a postdoctoral fellowship and his area of interest is in neuroscience. Next is uh, Puyan Fazli. Uh, he will be joining the Department of Computer Science. Uh, his PhD is from the University of British Columbia, Canada. He's coming from uh, Cleveland, Ohio, where he was an assistant professor there. His area of interest is artificial intelligence, autonomous robots. I saw a really cool YouTube video of his robots. They're about this big, so if you see something zooming around the library, don't be afraid, it's a friendly robot. <laughs> Next is Luella Fu. Uh, she'll be joining the mathematics department. 
Uh, she received her PhD from the University of Southern California, and her areas of interest are statistical models, data, and large-scale uh, significance testing. Next is Shasta Ihorn. Uh, her PhD is from the University of Texas, Austin, and her interests are in, um, she'll be joining the Department of Psychology. Her interests are in cultural competencies, interpersonal relationships, and resilience. Next is Fatima Kalkal. Uh, she got her PhD from Ecole Polytechnique de Montreal in Canada. She was a lecturer in the School of Engineering, and so we're really excited to welcome her into the faculty. Um, her areas of interest are mechanics of complex fluids, uh, the out, very, oh, let me see if it's my rheology, and microfluidics. I need to learn what rheology is. Okay. <laughs> Next is Jing Jing Chi. Um, she will be joining uh, the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Her PhD is from the University of Florida, and her interests are in solar materials, energy, and electrochemistry. Next is David Quintero. Uh, he will be joining the School of Engineering. He has his PhD from the University of Texas, Dallas. Uh, and he's also interested in robotics, uh, rehabilitation robotics, so prosthetics, um, control theory, biomechanics, and um, STEM pedagogy. Next is Nicole Salazar Velmezhev. She'll be joining the Department of Biology. Her PhD is from the University of Miami, and her postdoc was here at Stanford University. Uh, her areas of interest are cancer biology, um, antibody structure function relationships, and cancer um, health disparities. Um, joining us in the spring will be Hao, Hao Young Song. Um, she is coming um, from Korea, uh, where she uh, is working for Samsung. Her PhD is in Advanced Institute of Science in South Korea, and her area of interest is mobile apps. And I think that's it for me. So congratulations to our incoming faculty. And I give back the podium to Nancy. <laughs> Accumulating quite a lot of papers up here, but I think we'll, we'll deal. So thank you very much to all of the deans and the unit heads for those introductions. Uh, so it is my great pleasure now to be able to introduce our distinguished faculty. Uh, these are uh, faculty members that last year were nominated and awarded uh, one of our four Distinguished Faculty Achievement Awards. And one of the things that I was warned about when I became chair of the Senate last year, that I was going to have to try to scrounge up some money uh, to support these awards. Uh, we had had external funding, and unfortunately uh, that uh, was depleted, and it had been apparently quite the battle to try to find funding for this every year. Uh, so as faced with having to tell the faculty that they won the awards, that congratulations, you win an award, and you're the first group that doesn't get any money associated with it. So that didn't sound so good. So I started working uh, with uh, several different people to try to address this when I met with the San Francisco, uh, when I met with uh, VP Robert Nava of University Advancement. And he was looking for ways in which the San Francisco State Foundation Board and Advancement could connect with faculty and make their achievements more clear, both on and off campus. So he facilitated an agreement between the Academic Senate and the Foundation Board to fund not just the awards, but a reception for the awards, little plaques, and uh, we had quite a wonderful, wonderful event at the last plenary of the Academic Senate last year. And I think we've got, yep, there are some of the past and present award winners at the event. Uh, and really enjoyed it. I just want to acknowledge uh, VP Nava. This was an enormously a generous uh, gift. And in addition to the faculty awards, he also will, the board will be funding a staff award as well. And so our uh, committee, chaired by Jennifer Aaron, will be working this year on developing criteria for that. So I ask those of you, uh, those staff of you out there, uh, to please consider applying for the awards. Uh, but again, I just wanted to recognize VP Nava. Uh, without his ge very, very, very generous help, uh, we would not be able to continue to offer these awards. So thank you very much. 
All right, and so our first awardee is uh, Kimberly Tanner uh, from the Department of Biology. And uh, by the way, all these slides are gonna be on our website. If you use the QR code on your agenda, you can get to our website very quickly and get to links to all of the people that were involved today. So you can read a little bit more about uh, Kimberly Tanner. She won the Excellence in Teaching Award for a, tenure, uh, for a tenured uh, professor. So we'd like to say congratulations to her. Uh, go ahead, next slide. Uh, Mark Batista, uh, we have a second award for teaching by a lecturer faculty, and Mark Batista was awarded this. He's been involved, as you can see, in some programs with Balboa uh, High School and with the Metro Academies, and we're very proud to uh, ha give him that award. Next, we have Thomas Parker, from the, also from the Department of Biology, who won our Excellence in Professional Achievement and Growth. He has a very, very large number of publications, very active in research uh, at uh, San Francisco State, uh, and is also married to the President's Chief of Staff, Allison Sanders, so <laughs> all kinds of connections. And then last but certainly not least, uh, we, the award for Excellence in Service, a Distinguished Faculty in Service Award came to James Martell. And many of you may know that in addition to all of the service that he's done on campus, he is currently the president of the California Faculty Association. And as such, he is on the podium here. And I am going to invite him to come up and say a few words about what's going on with our California Faculty Association. But first, if we could just say a round of our applause to our four Distinguished Faculty Achievement Award winners. Uh, thanks to everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm James Martell, the chapter president of the CFA, and I want to thank President Wong, Provost Summit, uh, Senate Chair Gerber, and all the faculty and staff who contributed to organizing this great event, and especially a warm welcome to the new faculty, both tenure and tenure track and lecturer faculty. This is a unique place marked by strong devotion to issues of social justice and academic freedom. And as, as uh, Dean Suyoshi already noted, this is the 50th anniversary of the Black Student Union Third World Strike, which led to the creation of the College of Ethnic Studies, which to this day is the only College of Ethnic Studies in the United States, and I think the world, and therefore the universe, as far as I know. <laughs> um, and in that spirit, I'd like to make a few remarks about how the union contributes to that mission, and how we will continue to work with the administration and the Academic Senate to ensure that SFSU continues to reflect these values. We always say that our working conditions are the students' learning conditions, and part of what makes these conditions a success is our resilience and common purpose. So our chapter is working with the central CFA office and other chapters on certain key issues I'd like to tell you very briefly about so you can get an idea of what our union is up to, what your union is up to. As many of you know, the CFA and the CFSU agreed to extend our contract by two years, which will now expire on July of 2020. This means we get two years of labor peace, a chance to focus on issues besides the bread and butter issues of salaries and benefits, but this does not mean that those basic issues have been ignored. By extending the contract, we also repeated the raises that we got two years ago. So on November 1st, faculty will get a 3.5% raise, and in July, you'll get a second raise of 2.5%. Yes, it's great. <laughs> The CFA also lobbied hard and received an extra $100 million in funding for the CSU over and above what the CSU itself originally requested. So that will be extra money for all of us. And we worked with student groups in April to put a major show of strength in Sacramento to ask the CSU not to raise tuition, and that was a success also. Um, one key issue that the CSU as a whole is devoted to is to fight racism and other forms of bias at all levels in our universities. As part of that effort to combat racism, we ran several unconscious bias workshops on this campus, and I would encourage all faculty here to attend one, as they're really helpful and do a lot of important work. I went to one myself, and I really got a lot out of it. I've also talked to President Wong about the possibility of having these workshops for administrators, too. The point of these workshops is not to say that we're all racists, but rather to show that bias is so insinuated in so many aspects of our professional lives that we don't even realize it sometimes. And to recognize this allows us to make fundamental changes. We'll be having more of those workshops as well as other new workshops that we're developing on anti-racism and social justice in the future, so look out for those. We send a lot of emails to everybody, so please do read those. Um, another key point we're involved with is political work, supporting candidates who support labor, and especially what we do here at the CSU. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we're gonna have an election in November, so we all have to get out there and work. 
Part of that work also involves demonstrations and protests, and I want to invite all of you to take part in a massive demonstration that CFA will participate in on September 8th to fight climate change. We're doing this in alliance with many groups, and, and everyone's invited. If you're interested, we're going to meet uh, as a group on the corner of Stewart Street and Embar at the Embarcadero at 10 a.m. that day. Wear red. Um, the march is going to go from Justin Herman Plaza at 11 to the Civic Center. And with all the smoke in the air um, and the fires this, this fire season, I can't think of a more important time to get out on the streets. The CFA is also devoted to organizing itself both horizontally and vertically. And we're continuing to develop our departmental representative system so that every department on campus will have a tenure track and a lecturer or faculty representative. The idea of this is to have ideas and energy flow between the rank and file of our union and the executive board. We've had a lot of success in organizing this, and we're going to continue to work on that. So if you're in a department that doesn't yet have an, uh, both of those representatives, you will be having an election soon. Feel free to volunteer. We're always looking for people. And in general, we always welcome any kind of spirit or energy and ideas into the, into the union, because it's all of our union. We're actually going to have our first departmental rep uh, meeting soon, and we're going to talk about all the issues and concerns that we all share. And the last thing I want to say is that we've been working with the administration and the Academic Senate on issues of common interest. I believe we're much stronger when we all stand together, and we have so much uh, in common. I've been meeting regularly with President Wong, and we'll be meeting regularly with Provost Summit and with, uh, the, with uh, Nancy Gerber, the chair of the Academic Senate, to discuss issues of common concern, and I look forward to more of that collaboration as we enter the academic year. And the last thing I want to do is very quick, because I know we don't have time, but it's, I did this last year, and it was really great, to do a union clap. So I want all of you to join me. The way it works is you start out slow, and you get faster, and it's a consensus building experience. OK, ready? <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. I now want to introduce uh, my sister in the union movement, uh, Sandy Noda, who is the president of the SF chapter of the SCUEU. Good morning, President Wong, Do Dr. Gerber, Vice President, Deans, staff, faculty, students, and members of the university committee, community. Welcome to the start of the 2018-2019 academic year. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Sandy Noda, and I'm the current president for the San Francisco State University chapter of the California State Employees Union. First and foremost, I'd like to thank President Wong, Dr. Gerber, and the Academic Senate for inviting me to, here to speak today. In my six plus years as chapter president, this was the first time I was invited to speak at convocation. A former mentor of mine once told me that unions always have an ask, but rarely speak of the good that unions do. So today I'm going to do a little of both. To all the union friendly managers, administrators, supervisors who have allowed and encouraged our leadership and stewards to participate both in union and university events, thank you. I would especially like to thank my, my, my supervisor, Dr. Teresa Ribeiro, for allowing me to do that. I know it is not always an easy task to figure out scheduling and backfilling. To all the Chapter 305 leadership and stewards and all union activists, thank you for your volunteer service. I think that there's a myth out there that we all get paid to do union work, and that's not really true. Not only, not only do you have a university job to do, thank you for volunteering your personal time to help your union. There are, many, there are many times that it is not necessarily evident of what we do, but I'd like to believe that we have an impact for both the employees we represent and the university community as a whole. For example, it was our union's ask for the Years of Service Recognition Program. But this program wasn't just for, for our employees, it was for all staff employees, including the administrator and confidential employees at SF State. And I wanted to thank President Wong, Senior Associate Vice President Ann Sherman, the President's Cabinet and Office Staff, Nancy Ganner, Henry McCoy, Pat Ricketts, for helping to reestablish a program that has been absent at our campus for so many years. Without your support and the support of the Chapter 305 leadership team and some friends, I'm not sure where the, this program would be today. While we continue to fine tune the program, I am confident it is here to stay at SF State. So here's the union's ask today. Include us, support us, and re respect us. We are a part of the university community too. Rank and file staff are often forgotten in the shared governance process. 
We are getting better, but I feel that, that we could be better. The university often speaks of inclusion, yet still our rank and file staff are often forgotten. My second ask today is to support our union's bill, Assembly Bill 1231, otherwise known as the STEPS Bill, which would restore salary steps for the rank and file staff. Thanks to our statewide legislative committee, it, is, it has the support from many other unions. It has also cleared some major hurdles. It is scheduled to be voted on by the full Senate in the next few days. Help us with our voter voice campaign. I know on the first day there were 143 staff that participated, but we could do better. In conclusion, thank you, thank you for inviting me to speak today and on, and, and on behalf of the Chapter 305 leadership and stewards, welcome to the new academic year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandy. I was really excited to have uh, the CSUEU representation here as well. We really worked hard to open this event up to everybody, and we felt important that we hear not just from the CFA, uh, but from uh, the, the largest staff union on campus as well. So I'm really excited to have you. Um, so next, uh, another new speaker uh, for us uh, is our uh, Associated Student President. Uh, and this year, uh, the president is Juan Carlos Hernandez, and I would like to invite him up to the podium to say a few remarks. On behalf of the Associated Students and the existing student body, parents, students, and faculty alike, we humbly welcome you to San Francisco State University, home of the Mighty Gators. As a proud student serving as president on the 2018-2019 AS Board of Directors, I can speak for all when I say there is a certain vitality, an indescribable feeling instilled in the fiber of our existence. Being on a campus of change to some of the world's known leaders, activists, and change makers. Whether it's the shining legacy of the movements like the Third World Liberation Front with fierce groups for change like the Black Panther Party, PACE, or La Raza, or notable leaders in their own right like Danny Glover, Margaret Cho, or the aching loss of the bright fire that was Professor Don Mabula. We are a campus with a diverse tapestry with threading as colorful as the stories we hold. Amidst the countless amount of paperwork, the crippling anxiety of being in a new environment, or even the mounds of upcoming homework weighing at our consciousness, one must ask themselves, what does it mean to be a gator? And how can we leave a legacy as a gator? Familiar with the burden of having to speak out against forces that encourage submission, what it means to be a gator is to know we are a part of a greater blueprint for change, no matter the major. A blueprint with dimensions of acceptance that isn't colored with a price tag or label, but is embraced because of its difference. A blueprint with carefully measured lines of tolerance no matter the ideology, race, sexuality, or gender of an individual. To be a gator is to know you've already made the first step by being here today and starting a legacy of change. Consider the brilliance of man, fire not only provided a source of warmth, protection, and a method for cooking food, but served as an important ecological process that has been proved to stimulate human growth. Leaving a legacy is a lot like starting a fire. Some people were born with the matches in their back pocket, and some of us were given two sticks to rub together. See, the spark is the same, but getting to the spark is the journey. If you were one of the lucky ones, if a lighter, if you're one of the lucky ones, if a lighter wasn't passed down to you from generations past then, and the best you can do is rub those two t and the best you can do is rub those two sticks together until you create a spark. The matter of fact is that the way that the matter of the fact is that this way may take longer and it may be more daunting, but it will always mean more. This passing analogy frustrated me like many students strenuously encountering hard times revealing itself in the most inopportune moment. But it was the truth. The fact is creating fire allowed the expansion of human activity to proceed into the darker and colder hours of the night, which is to say the legacy that was passed down to you through the firm roots of your family tree is a legacy that will allow you to create your own here on campus and soon in the future. But in order to do so, we must be better. We must not duplicate the current state of our government with transparency issues and unjust laws. We must know that if we cannot question the process, if it is restricted to think outside the box to come up with new innovative solutions, if it is illegal to challenge our own consciousness, then freedom does not exist. Gators, we must remember we aren't a broken generation, we're just a paralyzed one. 
You have made the first step just by being here today, but your willingness to succeed, your tenacity for your art, your grit to add vitality and energy to a conversation that requires your voice will determine how soon you walk into your success. Because as long as you have a pulse, you have a purpose. See, when we know the sharpness of our bite, the resistance of our skin, the skill of our being, and the fire we are born to make, we are no longer just students eating noodles in Mary Park, or rock climbing at Mashouf Wellness Center, or even studying hard in the library. We become leaders, gassed by the flames of our passion and enhanced by the legacy of this campus. But most importantly, we are gators. Thank you again, thank you again and once again, welcome to SFSU. All right, thank, thank you so, thank you very much, Juan Carlos. I'm looking forward to working with um, all of you. So in the interest of time, I'm gonna cut my remarks quite short. Uh, I did want to uh, thank the organizing committee to help make this event happen, and in particular, Nancy Ganner, the Director of Community Engagement and Special Events for Administration and Finance. Through her, I've met so many people outside of academic affairs, and I'm really looking forward to working with a lot of you in the upcoming academic year. So if you could please join me in thanking her for all that work. So as I said, I'm gonna skip through most of my remarks, but I did wanna say just something about this idea of us as a community. One of the purposes in broadening the scope and the reach of this event, and one purpose of having all of those tables amidst that reception in the morning, was to try to bring us together, faculty, staff, uh, and administrators, to try to get us to recognize the commonalities that we have. We're all in this together. So I like the Warriors uh, uh, logo, strength in numbers. I feel like that uh, expresses some of us as well. And one of the ways that we can work together to make this a better university is through shared governance. When I first came here, I would have told you that shared governance was just faculty working with administrators. I've now come to realize that it takes all of us, faculty, staff, and administrators, and, and most, even perhaps most importantly, students. The Academic Senate has representatives from all of, that group, all of those groups, and if you're interested in getting involved and haven't, please come and talk with me, and I would love to help you find your path towards supporting shared governance um, on our campus. And I really look forward to working with uh, both our CFA and our CSUAU representatives and with the Associated Students Board uh, this year to try to accomplish some really great things on this campus because I think we have a lot of potential. And I really want to see each one of us thinking about what can we do to make this a better campus? What can we do to help educate our students? How, what can we do to help make them successful and to leave here? Uh, really uh, positive about our university. Uh, I would like every student that leaves here to think that they got an excellent education and to be proud of that and as Juan Carlos said, to be proud of being a, a San Francisco State Gator. So I would like to thank all of you for being here today and I would just encourage you to look for those opportunities to get involved, look for those opportunities to make connections with each other and looking uh, forward to having you involved in shared governance on our campus. And so with that, I would like to now invite uh, our president, President Leslie Wong, to come to the podium for his closing remarks. And thank you all very much. Wow. Um, let me add my voice and, and welcome to all the new faculty, staff, students, and community members. Um, when you look at the slides, it is really evident that we continue to attract the incredible high talent that makes this university what it is. And I'm most grateful to be part of it, and I look forward to 2018 and 19. Um, there are a lot of new, and I put that in quotation, things that will uh, occur this year uh, that I'm looking forward to, and I'd, I'd like to just touch upon them and ask you to be engaged, to be patient, uh, and to keep your eyes on the road ahead. A professional survey of campus climate by Rankin and Associates will be in full gear, as Vice President Hong mentioned earlier. I'd like to say that campus climate is a complex phenomena that ranges from campus safety to peer interactions 
to the psychological, social, and personal conditions that support or detract from student, faculty, and staff success and productivity. As a major urban university in the best city on the planet, we expect much of ourselves as we relate to one another. One another. And as a major public university, we have obligations and responsibilities to that very public. But let's not deny our primary purpose, and that is the educational productivity of every student and employee on this campus in a progressive, tolerant, and mutually supportive environment. New construction, and like Vice President um, Porth, uh, it's going to require a lot of patience, but I have to tell you that when I first became a university president nearly 15 years ago, one of my mentors said that the best noise a president likes to hear is the sound of construction. I do have some sound deadening headphones on my desk. As Jason was saying, the Holloway mixed-use site on 19th and Holloway and also on the Tapia Triangle uh, down the street will uh, be demolished uh, this semester. The de uh, demolition of the Tapia Triangle is actually underway as we speak. The Holloway mixed-use project will make room for significant more student housing along with street-level businesses, continuing the transformation of Holloway Avenue down to the Mishoof Center. Also along Holloway, the demolition of the Tapia Triangle will set the stage for the construction of a new liberal and creative arts building, which Dean Andy Harris spoke to, and I will re-inform him of the square dimensions of his office in that building. I also want to mention that we have begun raising significant dollars for the construction of a new science building on 19th and Buckingham. And we will continue to work on our new master plan, which will guide the transformation of the campus over the next decade. I want to thank our donors, supporters, and the Chancellor's Office for their ongoing support of our wish to bring the physical plant to a new high level of quality suitable to our faculty and students and staff. I particularly want to thank Vice President uh, Porth for his, and his small army of designers, engineers, and planners who have already clocked thousands of hours to make this happen. And if there is a word that goes, goes well with bold, it is transformation. I also want to give a special thanks to the employees of admin and finance who have kept this old ship afloat and who have tirelessly prepared for new construction. I really recommend that everyone visit Future State to comprehend the campus transformation now underway. And like uh, Jason, I'm a big fan of Star Trek, and if you remember, there was an episode where the USS uh, Starship Enterprise was being remodeled. And Captain Kirk looking out the window was just filled uh, with emotion, and I will tell you that along with Captain Kirk and Picard, I look forward to looking at the transformation of this starship as we go forward. The university's first comprehensive fundraising campaign, Bold Thinking, continues to be successful. And I'd like to give you a few points that Mr. Nava had referred to earlier. The effort has now raised over $100 million towards its $150 million goal uh, to be completed by December of 2020. Being competitive as I am, I would like to hit that goal far sooner. This campaign is providing philanthropic support for our faculty, students, and programs. I want to thank the faculty and staff who have contributed over $4.6 million towards the campaign with current pl and planned gifts on all levels from $25 to over a million dollars. Every donation is important and every donation counts. Of all the contributions so far, about 40% have been for academic programs and 42% for student support. About 15% has been provided for faculty support 
including an endowed chair in Iranian diaspora studies, the first of its kind in the country, and 3% to improve facilities and equipments. And we will announce the campaign publicly in April of 2019. I hope you will make time to attend the event. Third, I think it's third, we will not lose our focus on the graduation initiative. As we welcome more than 8,000 new Gators to campus this week, student success remains job one. And we will continue to improve the curriculum and our efforts to promote student achievement with special compliments to the faculty, to the de academic deans, and to the provosts. And a very special and personal note from me. In the face of disparaging remarks made recently about Chinese faculty and students by the current leadership of the United States government and continuing rhetoric marginalizing Chinese members of our community, I want to affirm our longstanding commitment to the principles of equity, inclusion, and social justice. Our international students, faculty, and colleagues are valued and important members of our educational community, and I am personally saddened and repulsed by the ongoing stereotyping and malicious rhetoric now occurring with Chinese and Chinese American students and faculty. We are proud of our diverse campus community, and I believe that we are enriched and made stronger by the, by the robust and meaningful exchange of ideas and cultural perspectives that define the San Francisco, San Francisco State University um, experience. And I wanted to offer that thought because San Francisco ha State has one of the pioneering Confucius Institutes. We also have one of the Department of Defense Chinese Language Institutes. We have one of the largest density of Chinese American scholars on our faculty and staff. The lar one of the largest populations of Chinese and Chinese American students. And a president whose last name is Wong, <laughs> who has also done a lot of work with the President Obama and his team, of which I am deeply proud. It means that we are in the target, and we will repulse that effort. Thank you, thank you. In closing, I am constantly reminded that we must remain committed to our sense of values. I cannot ever remember a time in my 45 years in higher education when national leadership's moral and social failure has unleashed a level of hate and bigotry that we as scholars must now confront. Resilience, one of our core values, is never more important than right now. A commitment to our sense of community in this storm must be affirmed and we must affirm our community every day, every hour of our professional and personal lives. And we must not only resist this ugly wave, but we must also demonstrate publicly and privately the fundamental values of our democracy. In closing, I want to wish you all the best for a productive and meaningful academic year. Change, transformation, bold thinking, that's tattooed on the side of our starship. And we are going to move at light speed. Go Gators, and welcome to all of you. Have a great year. Just like to echo that, thank you very much for attending, and you are dismissed. <laughs>